Okay, very good. Hi, good evening, everyone. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Thank you very much for coming. I, I know like all of you have been through a hard day of work and still make it here, so I appreciate that. Tonight we're getting together to talk about CFA. Um, <coughs> I don't know how many of you have like make up your mind to sign up for it or you just want to come here to, to find out what it is. Um, it is all good. Um, I can promise you one thing. Tonight I'm not going to do marketing talk. So this is really a very valuable one hour that we can get together to talk about CFA, what it really is. Um, if you want to sign up for it, uh, what was the level of commitment and what to expect, or even whether CFA is right for you. Um, um, tonight we're going to spend about 45 minutes together to go through some of the, 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 the presentation slides. And then in the second stage, I'm going to hand over um, the, the, the stage to my colleague to talk about the resources that we have. All right? So um, I'm going to go slow. If you have any questions, you can just stop me. Right? You don't have to wait till the end. In the end, we have a little bit of Q&A time. But any time during my presentation, if you have any questions, you can just stop me. And we can talk about, talk about your, your, your concerns, your questions. Okay? Um, my apologies. My voice is a little bit stuffy tonight. Uh, it's still coughing. Right? So um, if you don't hear me clearly, please let me know. <coughs> First of all, a little bit about my background. My name is uh, Kwok Wai. I teach uh, CFA at Kaplan for I think over four or five years now. And I have a banking background, uh, mainly in structured product risk management. And before my banking career, actually I was an engineer. Um, engin any engineer in here tonight? How about accountants? Do we have any accountants? No, anyone from banking? All right, I saw. Okay, and like, uh, how about other people? Where, where are you from? Like, which area you you're in? Okay. Okay, I see. All right, very good. How many people actually do not have a finance background at all? How many of you? All right, some of you are like from IT or from like those like, areas. Okay, that, that's all good. So if you have any questions, like let me know if I like uh, use any like finance jargon that you're not familiar with, you can stop me, okay? So um, I, I do work in banking for a long time. And uh, before that, I actually worked uh, six years in um, engineering before I moved to New York and then um, started my, my business school and then switched to banking, right? <coughs> and then tonight, um, this is the agenda, but we don't really stick to it. It is really driven by what you want to know, right? So I will do my presentation. Again, if you have any questions, then let me know. Right. First, what's a CFA? Is, uh, is CFA right for you? I, I think this is the most uh, important question. CFA is a huge commitment. It, it is a very challenging exam. Uh, I think before anyone signs up for it, I, I think it is really important what, what it really is and is it really right for you. Right? And um, to be honest, I think CFA is the most uh, challenging qualification in terms of like pub public like, examination that you can take and then get a qualification. I think CFA is the gold standard. I, I think like uh, uh, d don't just listen to me, talk to other people. I think you'll get the same answer. CFA is really the most uh, challenging qualification you can get in the market now. And look at the um, population of the like, CFA charter, charter holders um, in the world. It was like almost like 120,000 people taking CFA every year. And CFA is getting so big that I remember I, I like when I was working in New York, the, the exam was so big that it could almost slow the market because so many people just like took time off to, to prepare for it. You saw like fewer people on the commute train in the morning just on the exam day just because like, people were like taking the exam. And then how about employment trends and career benefit of getting your CFA? So um, you can look at the um, <coughs> common applications of like CFA Institute members. Like many of them are in like portfolio manager management and uh, research and like uh, other category in different like uh, finance areas. Um, I think one thing very important to clarify is: Do you think P 
people in these areas like to take CFA, or after they get their CFA, they can walk into these areas? I think that's the number one question that you have to clarify. What do you think? I would love to tell you that after getting a CFA, you can get any job you want. Um, but I think I should let you know, in this market, no qualifications can guarantee you anything. Even people on the job may get laid off any time. So the hard reality is that CFA is great. It like discipline you to study a lot in finance. If you want to get to understand finance, you want to take CFA, you want something to drive you through the financial knowledge, that's great, really good. But if your thinking is, I want to go into finance and I want a qualification to guarantee me that, um, the reality is nothing can do that. Sad, but, but I think that's the reality. All right, so um, CFA is good. We're gonna talk about like uh, many things about CFA, but I think the number one key point to understand is there are many people in finance who can beef up their resume by taking CFA, but if you're totally from a non-finance areas and you think about getting into finance, I think CFA is very useful. It demonstrates your determination, but it will be an illusion if you think you can CFA and you can walk into any bank and get any job you want. I will, be, it would, I will not be a very responsible teacher to, to tell you that. But so that's the number one thing to, to, to bear in mind. If you have any questions about the, like, uh, the value of a CFA uh, title, then let me know, we can talk about it, All right? And then like uh, the employers of CFA charter holders, like uh, you know all the names and, and you can identify so many banks that are in trouble themselves, like BOA, uh, C Citibank. So you don't need me to elaborate on how difficult the market is right now. Uh, but you know what? During the difficult time, it is also the best time to beef up on your resume because you just don't know what is going to happen, right? And then like uh, in many of the hiring like uh, notices, you, you notice that more and more people call CFA and MBA. Do you know the positioning of MBA like compare with MBA? Which one is higher? CFA, MBA, what do you think? MBA, um, I did some hiring for my bank so I can tell you what, what people, what the hiring managers really think. Um, I think if your MBA is from top tier school, like top 10, top 15, I do think MBA is a couple of notches about CFA. But if your MBA is from a decent school, but not those like top tier, uh, well recognized well names, then I think CFA actually gives you a better value in terms of recognition. And it is also a very like universal qualification that you can get. For example, you get an MBA from like Hong Kong College, Hong Kong University or CU. Those are very decent universities. But if you move out of Hong Kong and you want to carry a qualification with you internationally, then I would think CFA is better. What are the like, good things about doing an MBA? I think number one is you can actually pick what areas you want to study, right? You want to do marketing operation, research or quantitative finance, you can do that. But if you sign up for, for a CFA, do you get to choose? No, you have to do the full menu, regardless of your background. Like for example, you may have done like statistics for 15 years, you still have to take st statistics in the CFA syllabus. You don't get to choose, you have to cover all the areas. Oh, I hate derivatives, I hate math, can I skip it? No, many people hate like for example, Accounting, how many people actually hate accounting? No one, okay, all right, I do, I, I don't like accounting, but if you do CFA, you have to do it, all right? The best thing is like, you have to go through the topics that you don't like and you, you, you find them boring, but the good thing is like, it is also a good driving force to drive you through some of the challenges that you have been putting off for a long time, all right? And I can tell you that we're gonna go, go t into the syllabus of CFA in a little bit, I do think the level one CFA syllabus is pretty good. Actually, as a whole, I think CFA syllabus is pretty good. 
like going through all three levels of CFA, I think you you do you 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 do beef up your financial knowledge quite a bit, right? And then how about the good things about doing CFA? I think number one is is cheap. It's much cheaper than an MBA. An MBA like doing the GMAT, doing the application, stuff like that. It it takes you a long time. But CFA is cheap. Now you sign up on it. Doesn't matter how many times you try, then you 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 you, you get it very cost effective. And also in terms of the uh, uh, the duration of the program, now you're signing up for the June one if you go for it. And then June, no one studies CFA for the whole year. I can tell you the truth. Like most people study it for like four, five, six months, depending on your background. If you're not from finance, then you you study more. If you already went through some of the topics, then you study like three to four months. So in terms of like the duration of the program, I can tell you the net time of study for a CFA program is a bit shorter than that of MBA. Right. Uh, but of course, MBA, you can do group work, you get to do networking. Those are very valuable things that you don't get in CFA. A CFA is a pure like exam-driven qualification. So I do encourage people to do like CFA in a group setting. It doesn't really have to be in a class setting like this. If you don't want to do a class, do a group study, do a study group or anything, just get people together so that you know where to benchmark yourself and it is more interesting to do it that way. Right? So th I think that is important. Okay. Um, any questions so far? Anything you want to know about CFA? No? Okay, let's go on. All right, the entry requirement. The number one requirement is that you must already have a degree. Right? I think all of you do, right? Um, it doesn't matter what your background is. Like uh, your degree could be in uh, social science or whatever, like math or, or finance. You can sign up for CFA. And then signing up for CFA is just the first step. Um, let me jump to the the, the graph here. So step number one is you do the registration. How many people actually have already signed up for level one? Okay, still thinking. That's good. All right, that's why you come. So you sign up for it. You register online, pay the fee. All right, then you on the hook. Then level one is offered twice a year, June, December. So I'm teaching the class going for the December first. And then if you guys sign up, there will be the June June first or early June class, right? And then if you pass level one, then you can go to the June level two next year. And level two is only offered once a year, right? So only level one is offered twice a year. Right? So let's say you, you shoot for the June one, you don't make it. That's okay. You can still catch the December one, try again. If you make it December, you're, you're not missing any time. You can still catch the June level two next year. Right? And then after that, you will shoot for the level three the year after. Right? So the whole time is about two and a half years if you make it through. Right? But uh, what do you think the average time people actually make it, the whole process from registration to getting your CFA title? How many years? That's about right, five years average. Five years average. So there's nothing embarrassing about like failing level one. It is not a test of intelligence. Seriously. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very good question. The question was, I, let's say I, I did um, my level one like 10 years ago, but then I put it off. I had a, uh, like uh, some other assignments that I cannot, I couldn't go strict to level two. It's the time limit that you have to finish the whole thing, right? There's none. There's none. Right. Any other questions? Right. Of the three levels, which one do you think is the hardest? Level one? Definitely not. Level one is like 
node. Personally, I think level two is the most challenging. But level two is like quite um, quantitative and very hard knowledge. I don't know whether you have talked to anyone before you came here tonight, but I think many people will tell you the same thing. Level two is really the killer, right? And also, once you make level two, you won't think too much, all right? You will just like, have only one going in your mind. Oh, let me get rid of level three. Like, and you, 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 at that point, you will be so sick of the materials that you don't, don't want to do it anymore. So you will be 100% shooting for level three. So you have like incredible momentum after this point. So level three is challenging, but you also like rise up to meet the occasion. And also one thing is level three is challenging, but not challenging in the way that the materials are difficult. I would say level two materials are difficult, right? And over the years, they make them even more difficult. For example, now they have like binomial pricing, with neutral like pricing. Those are quite advanced like financial concepts that I didn't study when I did my CFA like almost like 10 years ago. Like it was a long time ago, right? So they do make it more and more challenging. I, and I think now getting a CFA chartership is harder than it used to be. Like, and CFA has a long history. It has over 20, almost like 30. I can't remember exact time, but it has a very long history, 30, 40, 40 years. And in the past, they had only one level. And the passing rate was like 85% something. So if the uncle tells you that he is a CFA charter, there was a no, no big deal. But now you're getting it, that's quite a commitment, right? <coughs> so the whole picture is you do a registration, you do level one, two, three in sequence, right? Doesn't matter how many times you try, doesn't matter how many times you fail, right? And once you finish level three, it does not mean that you're the CFA charter holder already, all right? One more thing you need is you actually need to accumulate four years of relevant work experience during this uh, time timeline, right? And where you're gonna get that four years does not matter, for example, before you sign up, you already have accumulated four years of relevant work experience. That's why even you change to uh, uh, a career outside finance, you already you have already met that requirement. Or what? Or even after you finish like all three levels, and then you go into finance and accumulate four excuse me four years of work experience, then you apply for the scholarship, then that's fine. All right. <coughs> Very good question. What consider qualified work experience? Um, they don't really say it for like like they they, they don't really say very hundred percent clear. Like uh, I I think it is more like uh, rather than a rigid rule what are qualified what are not. It is more about your the nature of your work is it relevant to investment. Right. For example, you're in IT. If you do a pure IT, like do 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 programming for like for for like uh, uh, industries, I don't think that is relevant. But if you do IT in a banking environment, you like take care of the pricing model for like uh, structured products, that will be relevant. Or if you do like uh, relationship management in a hotel setting, that won't be relevant. But if you do like relationship management in a financial setting, and you deal with customer, you, you handle the, 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 the questions, the concerns, you handle uh, like uh, um, the uh, financial reporting, that will be relevant. And the actual process is, it is not like uh, you call them up and tell, you what, tell them what you do and they tell you whether your work background is relevant or not. It is like you need to pick two CFA charter holders to sign up on your background. That's all. I just did it for another guy. So it, the, the actual process is quite simple.